Good, yeah, fantastic presentation by Leonard Foltz. And now we take our virtual journey and continue on. I believe our next guest is going to be here in Germany, and we'll see. He also has a very, very unique name, so of course I'll ask him if we pronounce it correctly. But I believe it is Dr. Kai Matuskiewicz, and I want to see if Dr. Matuskiewicz is here, if he can... And it's on his way. I heard from our technical team that we're establishing the content. Again, if you'd like to post anything online in any of your social media channels, hashtag OSC2023 would be fantastic. And yeah, we're now very excited to welcome our last speaker for the day, for our first day of the Open Science Conference. Dr. Matuskiewicz, are you there? Yes, I am. Ah, wonderful. Moin. Good, good to see you, sir. Um, first of all, your name, am I pronouncing it correctly? Dr. Kai Matuskiewicz? Matuskiewicz, but Matuskiewicz is also fine. Okay, thank you very much, Matuskiewicz. Uh, can I call you Kai? I always ask in Germany. Yeah, do. Is this okay? Absol Fantastic. absolutely. Thank you very much. So, uh, Kai is joining us from the Phillips University of Marburg. I checked on that too. Actually, I visited Marburg a few years ago. And the, uh, it was founded in 1527 and it is the first Protestant university in Germany, if I understand correctly, the University of Marburg. So a lot of history there. Um, Dr. Matuszkiewicz is a media researcher and in addition to game studies, media and university didactics, media production and reception, digital humanities and media and cultural theory, he's also involved in open science, open access and scholarly communication. After completing a, comp a computer game studies dissertation at the DFG Research Training Center, 1787, Literature and Literacy Dissemination in the Age of Digitalization in Göttingen, he was a research assistant in projects on game-based learning in Kassel and is currently academic coordinator of the Media Studies Open Access Repository at the Institute for Media Studies in Marburg. I have to say, a lot of beautiful cities you spent your time in here in Germany. He's also co-editor of the Open Media Studies blog, as well as the publication series Media Science Reports and Papers for Data Publications. And today, he will talk about teaching open science in media studies. It's a great honor to welcome to our digital stage, Dr. Kai Matushkiewicz. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and also for having me today. I'm very glad that I can talk to you about three topics that are very close to my heart. And these three topics are, of course, open science, but also media studies and teaching. And without further ado, I would like to start with my talk. The digital transformation is fundamentally changing all scientific disciplines and thus also media studies. The open science movement, sorry, can, can you see my screen? Hold on. You can can you see my me? screen? Can you come back to me? Can you see my screen? Yes. I just Wonderful. got the thumbs up. They're working on the technical issue. And I see smiling faces, always good behind the screens here. Does that mean we're good? I believe we can do it now. Let's continue. If there's any problem, just let us know. We're here. I'm sorry. Wonderful. The open science movement and the digital humanities play a special role here as they lead to the digitization and opening of working, working practices and thereby challenge established structures. This is a challenge not only for the current generations of media scholars, but also for those yet to come. Ultimately, this means integrating open science into subject teaching to a greater extent than it has been up to date. At the Institute for Media Studies at the University of Marburg, the seminar Open Science and Media Studies was therefore held in the winter semester 22-23 to test how such offerings can be integrated into media studies teaching. On the one hand, this is a challenge in terms of content for the students who have so far been trained more in analysis of individual media. And on the other hand, it places a stronger focus on digital methods, praxeological considerations, and series of science and media with which the students otherwise have rather fewer points of contact in their studies before. These circumstances had to be particularly taken into account didactically. Thus, the seminar sessions not only dealt with open science principles such as open access, open data, open material caching resources, open peer review, open source, 
or citizen science, but also with how media studies as a humanities discipline with its professional needs fits into the entire open science movement or what openness actually means for media studies. For example, Jerome Sondervan shared his thoughts uh, about this in his 2018 entry in the Open Media Studies blog. In this process, it quickly became clear to the students themselves that open science and media studies not only extends uh, to the principles of open science, but goes beyond them. For example, the importance of open science for the digital transformation of media studies was discussed or how the relationship between media studies and digital humanities could be shaped in the future. The talk wants to present the didactic approach as well as its implementation and reflect the results of the course. Based on this, the lessons learned will be, shared, will be presented as well as modifications that seem to be make sense for the future implementation of the course. Furthermore, the lecture would like to make a plea for not leaving the libraries or graduate schools alone with teaching offers for uh, open science, but to show that open science is an essential aspect of subject teaching, and this especially against the background of the digital transformation of the science. I'm coming to the first part, didactic approach. Open science promotes and requires practices of networking and sharing. For this reason, Connectivism, a learning theory whose approach is to network learners with each other as well as with learning materials, was chosen as the basis for the seminar. In this way, networks of people and digital objects emerge, which are oriented in their nature to what we know from the current digital media culture and society. Connectivist approaches can thus be used to transfer forms of communication and organization from the life world to science in the course of opening up scientific working practices in the context of open science. Science thereby increases the life or its life world relevance and thus became more attractive to learners whose media socialization is primarily digital. Such a learning theory thus promises to impart social, organizational and communication skills that are of great relevance, as George Siemens already hints at in the subtitle of his 2005 publication, which calls connectivism a learning theory for the digital age. Within the didactic setting, it was particularly important not only to teach openness thematically, but also to actively live it when teaching. This means using practices and tools for collaborative work and actively involving students in the design of seminar sessions, such as topic selection. For example, a section on AI and privacy was held at student request. In order to take into account student wishes and suggestions for the progress of the seminar, the feedback was repeatedly sought as well as finally solicited for the entire course. Accordingly, feedback was obtained both formatively and summatively. A particular challenge was that the learners were not familiar with the topic of the seminar or its methodological approach from their previous courses. German language media studies emerged in the 1970s and 1980s from literary studies, which focused on textual analysis. Accordingly, media analysis in German language media studies long meant the analysis of individual media, such as films. For the analysis of open science, however, such processes are only of limited use, since it is a matter of understanding working practices, which are ultimately also media practices in the digital age. In this respect, a media practological orientation as influenced in particular by work at the University of Siegen, played a major role for the seminar, like Schüttpelz and Giesmann pointed out in 2015. This necessitated an increased inclusion of media theories on new media, as well as a more intensive engagement with theory of science in general. Conveying this knowledge classically 
via text reading would have led to rampant reading, which would have been contraproductive for the discussion atmosphere. The creation of such an atmosphere in which the students discuss not, discuss not only with the lecturer, but also among themselves was an essential didactic component of the seminar, since open science or its implementation ultimately always means discourse. For this reason, rather short introductory texts were used for preparation and at the appropriate point, content related inputs were repeatedly switched on, which also made it possible to establish references between topics across seminar sessions and thereby clarify the connections in the field of open science. The learning of the objective of the seminar was, on the one hand, to provide an introduction to the field of open science and its point of contact with media studies and, on the other hand, to discuss how open media studies should be structured and what the premises for these are. Accordingly, the seminar imparts the necessary knowledge as well as it should stimulate the acquisition of competencies. The second part, implementation. The seminar was part of the final module of the Bachelor of Media Studies and was therefore aimed at students in their fifth semester. The focus of this module is on in-depth and work with theories and methods of media studies. Due to the size of the course, over 40 students, the seminar had to undergo some didactic adjustments that weakened the connectivist approach. For example, given the number of students, it did not seem possible to conduct moderations of seminar sessions as coursework. In, case, in this case, students, after consultation with the lecturer, take over the content and didactic design of a session and are responsible for it in groups of two up to three students. Instead, thesis papers and protocols were used in which students should share thesis with, uh, with the course in preparation for a session, which would stimulate the discussion in the session or summarize the sessions as a record of results. A short text had to be prepared for each session, which served as the basis for the discussion together with the thesis paper. The sessions were introduced by a short input and a phase to ensure that all students entered the session with the same premises. The bulk of the session was dominated by the discussions themselves, which were particularly responsive to the students' inputs and thereby left them with the essential control of the direction of the discussion. In order to document the resulting discussions or to make them comprehensible for students who could not participate in them, the protocols were taken. In the selection of texts, the change that open science means for publication culture should also be reflected in the selection of corresponding text or publication types. Thus, many texts to be prepared were taken also for reasons of content relevance from the aforementioned uh, Open Media Studies blog, edited by Sarah de Maidang, Josefine Dieck, Alena Strohmeyer and myself. In addition to science blog, open science policies were considered at the new text type for students in order to be able to ask about the science policy implications of open science based on this. Furthermore, research infrastructures such as the Media Studies Repository Media Rep came into focus. The discussion of these made it clear that the digital transformation of media studies and the opening up to open science practices raises the question of methods in media studies once again. This is a particular challenge for a discipline with a hermeneutic core for which the confrontation with meteorological imports from the social or information science becomes a question of being. In this way, we can also understand why media studies as a humanities discipline sometimes struggle with an interdisciplinary opening, as it also the case, for example, in the discussion of digital humanities. By focusing on working practices, it was possible to critically reflect on the processes of change 
to which they are subjected in the research, teaching, scholarly communication, or administration. In this way, it was possible to discuss not only what openness means for media studies, but also what status media studies occupy in a digitally transformed open science. In addition to imparting knowledge relevant to open science, reflecting on the subject matter and the methods and working practices involved from a theoretical point of view, the seminar also focused on the practical exercise of collaborative working practices, since cooperative collaborative working is a characteristic of the opening up of working practices in media studies. For this purpose, the literature on the seminar was collected and managed together in a Sotero group and the editing of all protocols in the Etherpad was open to all participants of the seminar. These offers were bundled in the learning management system Ilias. Considering the novelty of the seminar in terms of content and methodology, the students were made aware of the existing support services which were used in particular when taking the examination as a term paper. And now I'm coming to the last, third and last part, reflection. As already mentioned, formative and summative feedback was obtained from the students. This took place in form of feedback discussions in the plenum in order to make them transparent for all. In particular, the strong focus of the seminar on discussions was positively evaluated, as well as the possibility to co-determine the topics. Critical comments were made that the session's content was, as expected, rather complex and abstract, and that the media practice orientation was not without preconditions, even if it was perceived as an enrichment to the previously known methods. In addition, it was reported back that the seminar, in terms of content and methods, had been quite technical and informatic at times. Even though the seminar was evaluated posit positively <clears throat> overall, excuse me, um, these are points that future courses of this kind should take into account in order to increase acceptance in the subject teaching on the part of the students. This could be achieved with regard to the seminar content and methods, for example, by trying them more, uh, by tying them more intensively back to media studies than was the case with the seminar. For example, when dealing with the topics, uh, with topics such as open source software, the focus could be more on programs that are particularly relevant for the students' practical media work, such as video editing programs. This would also increase the motivation and expectations of the students, which were surveyed in the first session and turned out to be quite low. Despite the content-related feedback from the students, such seminars should not shy away from addressing learning content that seems rather abstract for the subject culture, but is of central importance for the students' education, such as legal aspects or working with data. Even if it was not reported as a challenge by the students, it has to be stated that the collaborative work practices were little used. The reason for this should be investigated in the future and addressed with special measures, even if extrinsically motivating approaches might have been chosen for this. In the seminar conducted, this collaborative work was limited only to the required minimum and the possibilities beyond this were not used. However, the developed seminar concept can be taken even further, for example, offered in a modified form for master programs. This could build on the students' previous experiences with open science and add some extensions to it. For example, a less increased need for knowledge transfer allows to the use of didactic concepts such as inverted classroom, so that seminar sessions can be um, dedicated even more intensively to the deepening of knowledge. 
likewise. Newer forms of examination can be implemented, which make greater reference to open science practices and can finally be published as open educational resources. This could include, for example, teaching portfolios via platforms such as Mahara. However, this also means making the media productive aspects and the implications of opening them up to the topic of the seminar. Kai Rufing and I did that in a teaching project at the University of Kassel and the didactic concept of that a seminar has been published in 2022. However, such courses also require small group sizes if they are uh, if they are to succeed didactically. Another condition for success can to be offered such courses as corporations of the subject teaching with the corresponding departments of the university libraries or graduate schools in order to combine the subject specific and the information specific perspective on open science and to use open science principles to realize the establishment of open science practices in teaching across the university. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm looking forward to your questions. These are the references and my contact details. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kai. Yeah, a very, very interesting, interesting keynote speech. Thank you. A reminder to our audience, um, it is our last keynote for the afternoon, so you have the QR code right here. Please scan in on that. Uh, and in addition, of course, with emails, you can do that through that as well. Um, real quick, I, I had a basically, you, you touched on it, but we talk about ethical considerations. Are you concerned about the ethical considerations that arise when teaching open science and media studies such as, we talk about it in Germany a lot, issues related to piracy or privacy, copyright, and data sharing. Could you concretely tell me your feelings on that? These topics are very difficult, but, but they are important um, for such courses because, uh, I, from my point of view, teaching in, in media studies or universities has to be focused on what students want to do after graduating, mm -hmm. and so, we have to prepare them for the aspects that are relevant in, in our world and in media culture. Of course, piracy is a, is a huge point. For example, in, in, in Eastern Europe, piracy is an important issue or an important strategy to um, bring open access um, more forward. And also privacy is a very uh, important issue, um, especially in relation with um, aspects such as artificial intelligence. We talked about ChatGPT like that, and from from my point of view or from my experiences, it is beneficial to rely on the students' requests in these aspects and their knowledge if you want to implement it successfully. And I did that in the seminar, and it went out pretty well, I I guess. Very good. I'm checking with Slido. Yes, we have one question here. Um, will the seminar materials be made available as an open educational research? Oh, this is a general one. And do you think they could be applicable or adaptable to other domains too? In, in this seminar, we do not produce open educational resources. That might be a little bit um, counter. Um, it, it might be a little bit confusing in, in the first moment if, if you look at, uh, at the theme of the seminar, but um, we address students that had no or little points of contact with open science before. And so uh, we decided that we should not bring, in addition to the new content and new methods, new forms of examination into the seminar. In other cases, like mentioned in Kassel, we did that, um, or we want to do it, mm -hmm. and it was it is a little bit tricky because in media studies, a lot of content has to do with media and so with content that is legally protected. And there are license holders that are in the most cases very rich international media companies and you have to talk to them and you also have to talk to your own legal departments, which are a little bit, <laughs> a little bit cautious. In, yeah. in, in Germany. And so 
sometimes it could be very tricky to bring them out, but from from a general standpoint, I think that it is possible to share them, and I think that it is possible to adopt them, especially for the humanities or social science, for example. Great. Thank you very much. I just got the signal that we have run out of time, so I also wanted to give you a virtual applause. Thank you very much, Kaimat Tuchovitz, for your uh, fantastic keynote speaker. And then I just have one or two things I'd like to announce as far as the review of today and uh, for tomorrow. So if we're a tech team, we can say goodbye to Kai. Kai, take care and enjoy the rest of the Open Science Conference.